Today we're going to be topping up the barrels. So, what is the purpose of topping up the barrel? Typically what happens in an open barrel is the wine uh, absorbs into the wood to, to a certain degree and also some of the water and the alcohol evaporates out through the wood and there's an exchange of oxygen. It's called micro-oxygenation. And that enriches the wine and gives it that typical, uh, the typical appeal that you find from barreling your wines. And in the process, the volume of the wine shrinks month by month. So this is where some of the art of winemaking comes in. How often do you top it up? Well, if you, uh, if you top it up too often, you risk uh, allowing spoilage microorganisms into the barrel. Uh, if you top it up not often enough, then you risk too much oxygen in the headspace and possibly oxidizing wine. So my personal touch is I go about five to six weeks that I top up. And typically, it takes about 500 milliliters to top up a 54 liter barrel. So, over the course of a year, I'll put about five liters, roughly, into each barrel to top it up. So, this being a 54 liter barrel, I needed at least 60 liters of wine in order to keep this full. And I always like to have some, some reserve wine to blend back in, just in the case I maybe over oak it, or uh, to return some of the fruit characteristics. Uh, you know, the fruit characteristics to the wine and it, it typically loses some of the fruit characteristics while it's in the barrel so it's nice to blend some unbarreled wine back in to give it that fruit character so this is my uh, top up this is a Bordeaux blend of Cab Sauv, Merlot, Cab Franc, Pete Verdot and Malbec I've got a barrel full of Carmenere down here and a barrel full of this same wine here so I'll be blending it with both of those and I've also got a barrel of Tempranillo on the go, and I've got a separate uh, reserve for that to top it up. Typically, the process of topping up your wine is, is very simple. You open the you open the barrel, and then you either pour wine in from a small container, or you wrap it in with a racking tube, and you leave, you leave a little bit of a headspace at the top, which you can purge with CO2 before replacing the bottle. I use uh, these silicone bums because they make a nice tight seal. When you open it, it should make a, a vacuum type sound or a boom. And that tells you that it's sealing properly because as the volume drops, it will actually pull that plug in tighter and tighter. Now, an important thing to do at this stage is to taste your wines. You're only going to have this barrel open once every six weeks, roughly. So it's best to taste it now and see where it's at, make notes. And uh, you know, you want to control the oak flavor. What I've got going on here is I've got three barrels, and they're all at varying ages. So uh, this one, being the newest, is still imparting quite a bit of oak flavor, whereas the one in the corner, the Hungarian barrel, it's probably four years old now, maybe five years old. I bought it used, and it's pretty much neutral. But it still imparts a lot of the uh, microox characteristics and the condensing that you get. So it's still good, and you just need to use some oak chips. But what I've done uh, with the new barrel is I've cycled each project through it uh, at varying lengths of time. Now, of course, anytime we open up a barrel, we risk letting uh, stuff in just from the dust and the microorganisms that are floating around in the air that you, you can't see, but they're there. It's important to just prepare the bung with a little bit of your uh, sulfite solution just to make sure that uh, there's nothing alive when you open it. Now on each barrel I've got my record of when I've topped it up and uh, you know dates, volumes, all that sort of thing. That way if I uh, forget to make a notation in my book I've got it here right on the barrel and I can go back several projects to see exactly how long I've been using this barrel how many different projects have gone through it, and how long each project spent in the, in the barrel. So I've got my sterilized thief that I'm going to dip in and take a sample in a glass. Categories. Hey, what's your name? 
For at this stage, is you're trying to identify any faults you may have to empty that barrel and, and uh, treat the wine if there is a problem that shows up. And you want to get it early. We meet some time ago. One thing that you're looking for when you open up the barrel is a skin of any kind growing on top of the wine. That would indicate that you've got some sort of an infection, a microbial infection, and the way you might treat that. You may just take a spoon and it might just stick to the spoon and you clean the spoon every time that you took it out. That may be one possible solution. Another one would be to overflow the barrel because if it's floating and you're careful by with inserting your, uh, with inserting your tube, then you can keep it at the surface. Do your racking actually overflows the skin out of the barrel and then when you remove the tube there will be a bit of a head space there. You might have to take a little bit more out uh, and then you spray it down with your sulfate solution. Some of the considerations we're talking about is when we have to sulfate the one that's in there. Test it if there's something going on. But you can handle it in the barrel itself. It's recommended to sulfate so you take the amount of sweet serendipity, separate it from this, and then you add the sulfate to the back. Because if you add the sulfate directly into the barrel, you could get it overflowing. Okay, so we've got our racking tube. I'm just going to bring the wine from up here down to there. But before I do that, I want to taste this wine. So that if there is something going on in there, I don't add it to the barrel. The you know, barrel is good. And I'm also going to be adding this to the front of the air, so I don't want to slow those ones. So we'll try this first. And if all is well, then we'll go. Okay. So I've taken a sample of the uh, unbarreled wine. It is it's amazing how much the barrel has done for this wine. Not that this is bad, but it definitely has a bit more fruit character. Oh, sexy baby. sediment on the bottom of this. It's now six months into it. I've racked this one along with the rest of them according to the regular regimen for that. Now once I'm done with this, of course this uh, small container will have a large head space so I've got a 10 liter ready in the wings to take the extra. Now you don't want that up too high or a little wick up at the side of the bottom. And that's it for topping up the barrels. 